From 1963 onwards, British teenagers were able to watch the Beatles and other 60s pop stars who followed in their footsteps on television. Mainly thanks to the big four independent television franchises. Granada TV was owned by Sidney Bernstein. And ABC TV, owned by his arch rival Blue Grade. Both media moguls would receive the title Baron for their efforts. That box in the corner of our parents' living room was a massively powerful promotional tool. If you wanted to learn about the latest mod fashions, trends and music, then Rediffusion Television's Ready Steady Go was the show to watch. The weekend really did start here for teenagers who were part of the British mod subculture. Yes, that singer Dusty Springfield, who was one of the show's presenters in the early episodes. The BBC was always behind the times. Its Top of the Pops flagship pop show wasn't broadcast until a year later, in 1964. There were literally thousands of groups and artists who had a lot to be grateful for in terms of promotion from appearing on ABC TV's pop show Thank Your Lucky Stars during its run from 1961 to 1966, not least of all the Beatles. I used the word appear at the beginning of this presentation because it was rare that we saw our idols actually perform. In other words, sing and play their instruments. Which is a difficult thing to do, I realise, if your debut appearance involves you being pulled into the studio, standing on a platform truck, like the Beatles' debut on Ready Steady Go, on October the 4th, 1963. The fact that our idols were miming didn't really matter. It weirdly became an accepted norm. Even when it was sometimes ridiculously obvious with the drummer's drumsticks not actually making contact with their kit, or fiberglass cymbals and sound deadening pads on the drums, plus electric guitars and keyboards that were obviously not plugged in. The main thing was that we got to see our favourite idols, like the Rolling Stones, Swinging Blue Jeans or the Animals. Even if the guitars they were holding could easily have been cardboard cutouts. Television was the pop music fans' main visual access to their favourite artists back then. When access was limited to photos in the pop press and album covers, unless they were old enough and lucky enough to attend a live concert, where they could see their idols perform live on stage, but not necessarily hear them. The pop press was also where we teenagers got the latest news about what our heroes were up to, and where we could read their opinions. For example, Sandy Shaw stating that TV miming is no crime in her opinion. She had a string of UK hits in the 60s, and may have been the inspiration for some young girls who stood in front of the mirror with a hairbrush for a microphone, pretending to be a famous pop singer. The miming Beatles certainly made it look easy to play guitars, and are reported to be the reason for the increase in the sale of guitars and drums, mostly on higher purchase, or the Never Never, as payment by instalment was then called. In the pop press, we could buy what the stars were wearing through the mail order adverts and could find out about the latest record releases, from those that made it into the charts to those that were destined to be forgotten flops in each publication's latest edition. By the way, the Paramount seen here in the lower left corner were a support act for the Beatles and eventually morphed into Procol Harum. The blonde-haired guitarist Robin Trower and the late pianist and lead vocalist Gary Brooker seen here together. The TV pop shows like Ready Steady Go and the pop press were where our influencers could be found. 
except the word didn't exist in the sense it is used today. As teenagers, we didn't realise we were being influenced back then in the 60s, or was it being manipulated? So it was thanks to the independent TV franchises that we were able to watch groups not only mime, but also see and hear them play. This included the Beatles and others actually performing live on such prestigious stages and events like Val Pernell's Sunday Night at the London Palladium and the Royal Variety Performance Show. When you could see that their guitar cables were connected to the amplifiers. We were also able to watch the televised New Musical Express poll winners concerts, which included the Beatles after winning the Best British Vocal Group Award in 1963. They were introduced by American DJ Murray the K, the self-proclaimed fifth Beatle, who nobody in Britain had ever heard of, and Britain's most famous DJ back then, the one who would become known as the most infamous paedophile and sex abuser, Jimmy Savile, who, like a virulent Pied Piper that could neither sing nor play, was everywhere, where there were pop celebrities and where the young and gullible were to be found. 